Hi, Human Kinetics. My name is Melody Schoenfeld, and I want to talk a little bit about a concept um, that I see a lot where people consider certain foods good foods and certain foods bad foods. And here's the problem with that. Food is just food. Um, food is energy, right? So if there is, for instance, someone who is a marathon runner, they're going to probably down those, uh, those calorie gels, those, those carbohydrate gels. And they're not going to gain a bunch of fat in the middle of their run just because they had a carbohydrate gel, which is mostly sugar, right? Sugar is not innately evil. You don't bake demons into cakes. As far as I know, you might. I don't know, but I, I don't. Um, but in any case, um, food is there, there's no food that's going to inherently become evil. <clears throat> and you are not a bad person for having eaten a family pack of Oreos. By the way, I've eaten a family pack of Oreos. Pretty sure I'm not a bad person. And if I am, it's not because I ate that. Um, so, so really what it comes down to is where you want to get your energy from. Okay. Um, it's not that there is a specific food that is going to throw you off the wagon. Now, the, the issue will come is if it is the food that you tend to overeat. If it's a temptation food, if I have a certain food in my house, um, for me, it used to be jelly bellies. Fortunately, it was no longer jelly bellies, but it used to be. And if there were jelly bellies in my house, they would be gone. It would, I would eat all of them, right? Um, and so I know that I can't have that in my house, right? So if there is a food that you know you cannot control, you got to get it out of the house, right? Or eat, Or at least get it out of your access because there's a little math equation that your brain does where it calculates the energy it will take to get the food versus the reward, right? And at some point, your brain's going to be like, eh, you know, if I have to climb up on top of the shelf and pull it out of the back of the shelf and take all the other things off the shelf first and then take it out of a Tupperware and open a bottle and then get the food, maybe this isn't worth all this effort, right? Because your body doesn't want to expend a lot of energy if it doesn't have to. And so, um, if you have a, a food that's a temptation food that take the you just want to eat it all the time, you get it out of the house or get it out of your access, make it very hard for you to get, right? Um, you could, theoretically, lose weight eating nothing but Doritos. And you could, theoretically, gain weight eating nothing but broccoli, right? It's basically... Nobody's ever eaten that much broccoli in the history of time and everybody eats too many Doritos and that's the difference. Doritos are just easier to eat. So it's not that their Doritos are in and of themselves an evil food. They don't have a lot of nutrition to them. They will provide you with a source of energy, right? It's a matter of whether or not are you, are you going to use all of that Dorito energy that day? Um, or perhaps you might want to eat a vegetable and get some nutrition while you're at it. You know, there are better sources of energy for you, but it doesn't, necessarily mean that that food is going to make or break your fat loss and it's not going to make or break your health unless that's the only thing you're eating. If you're on an all Dorito diet, yeah, we have a problem nutritionally. You may have some health issues. We probably should talk about that. But from a fat loss perspective, you could do it. There was, I think in the 90s or maybe last year, I don't know, a few, a few years ago anyways, um, a professor did this experiment where he ate nothing but McDonald's and he still lost weight by the end of the month. And yes, it can be done. I don't know why anybody would do that voluntarily, but it can be done. Um, it really comes down to, are you burning off more than you are taking in, right? And so I think it's really important to take the stigmas away from food. There is no bad food. There is no good food. There's food that's better for you, for sure. There's food that's lower in calories. There's food that stays longer in your stomach and fills you up more. But in the end, it's just a source of energy. And you're okay for eating a cake, right? You're not a bad person. And if you happen to have a day where you go out of control and you eat the family pack of Oreos, it's always in your power to get back on track. It's always in your power to keep going. You're not a failure for having gone off track. So if I'm going to, for instance, drive from California to New York, and there's some road closures, I can still take a detour and get back on track. And it might take me a little longer, but I'm still going to be able to get back on the road. I can choose to continue to go on my road 
Or I can choose to turn around and go home and never get to my destination. Either way, I have made a choice. And the question is, is what is the choice do you want to make? And is that choice the best choice for you? And that's all. Okay, so it, it makes sense that you would want to give up and and throw, you know, I, I, I failed and why even bother now? Well, it's because tomorrow is another day and one day is not going to run anything. And everybody has an off day, has an off week. Sometimes people have an off year. You can still get back on track, even if you went off for a while. So it's always in your control. So... Just the takeaways here, there are no good foods or bad foods. There are foods that are better for you and foods that are easier to eat too much of. But in the end, it's just food and you're not a bad person for having, uh, for having eaten something that you think perhaps you shouldn't have. Okay, um, It's all about balance. Uh, it's all about moderation and it's all about staying within the energy that you're burning that day if your goal was fat loss. Thank you.